And I guess I'll go ahead and do a disclaimer too. I, 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 people think I might like come on too much. Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Shira. I'm Jesse from Quackalo. And today we're reviewing Cyberpunk 2077, Gangs of Night City, the, that, that title's way too long. Cyberpunk 2077, that's what we're reviewing. It's not the video game, it's the point. I think that's the point there. Now, you're reviewing, I do have a paid gameplay over on my channel and a free gameplay that we just recorded in studio, but I'm going to be giving you my highs, lows, and overview of the game, but not technically a full review. And I guess I'll go ahead and do a disclaimer too. I, 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 people think I might like come on too much, depending on who you are. If you, yeah. if people think I like come on too much, not enough that I, lots of opinions about that. So take all your opinions. I don't have a paid relationship with it at all, but but I like their games sometimes and other times not. And people read into that the way they want. Do I have because to give a disclaimer? At this point, I'm, you have to. Two, okay. two or three. I'm adjacent to him, and I'm adjacent to him, and I play games with both of them. So there, we there go. you go. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into this. There is multiple games already, multiple gameplays over on your channel. Uh, I think one already, one coming soon, depending on which of these go up first. We'll have them all figured out. Uh, there's a Kickstarter that will be linked down below. You can check that out. And I believe there's a TTS mod that just opened up. I saw your post. Yeah, it's so it's really interesting. For the first time in a, in a, in a lot of campaigns, Cyberpunk is available on TTS to play. I don't know what the modules are, but if you are a fan of the game and you want to try it out, that opportunity is there. So, very exciting. Just throwing dice That was here. kind of unnecessary. That was unnecessary. <laughs> but that, we're going to do a quick overview of the game, not highly in-depth, just general overview of the game is, and then from there we'll dive into our opinions. Uh, opinions with all the caveats and all that. Cyberpunk 2077 is an area control game, uh, but area control adjacent. It's definitely a part of the experience. You're going to want to take into account as you take it, as you move around, as you position yourself, uh, the areas you take when you reclaim, you're going to get more bonuses. There's a lot of area control adjacency things going on, but it doesn't always feel like that because there's a lot of other elements at play here. On your turn, you're basically going to take two actions. You're going to have six action discs, five specific actions, and one wild action. They each have different ways that they impact the game, the types of units you can move, building spell stuff up, getting bonuses, going on net runs, uh, initiating combat. They all have differences to what they do. You're going to take two actions and then from there you can take two more actions next turn and two more actions after that or at any point once you've taken some actions you could instead reclaim. Reclaiming is going to be where the area control comes into play a lot because depending on where you are and how much dominance or control or presence you have you'll get more and more bonuses and then additionally as you build out your safe houses you're going to get more and more units on the board so there's a slow escalation creep going on. That's kind of the stuff at the core of the game. Additional things they have are going to be there's going to be net running actions which is where you move up a track but using your net runners in order to get additional bonuses. There's going to be the edge runners which are various kind of think of them as mercenaries that you can hire and use their unique abilities in the game. There's going to be opportunities which generally correlate to points but with adjacent things and impacts and ways they stack up. And then a big part of the game is the story based experience in which there's going to be story cards, these sets of story cards. You don't have to play with them but they're, they're, they are built as a core part of the gameplay in which you're going to have these stories that you go through a set of a three story arc. You, you, take an, you have a story that will have different ways to change into the next story. Then from there different ways to change to the next story and again until you've gone through three different stories that will have different impacts on the game, different modifiers to the game and potential adjacent to other things that can happen that mess entirely with the game. Any core aspects I missed? I, around the stories, I would say there's the chance for uh, kind of branching narrative. Yeah. There's also the chance to play with a story module that gives you the randomness or gives you kind of the infrastructure of a story mm -hmm. arc without having it be branching pathways. Um, and then there's the chance to play without it, which isn't probably the recommended way of playing. And do you want to briefly touch upon combat? No. Combat. Combat's <laughs> gonna be combat's gonna be where you uh, basically you're gonna one of the core actions of the game is gonna be around centered around the combat. And the way that's gonna play out is you're gonna have your starting deck of four cards. And one of the actions you can take is you can upgrade your deck as you go. And in 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 combat, all players involved in the combat will play one of their cards, which will determine the strength of the combat. Any modifiers, which will be different abilities or ways it impacts other things. And then finally, the way you score points during the combat, as well as having people die during the combat as well. And for an area control game, there's only one of the five core actions you're taking that is actually in. Engaging in combat, the cards are broken, and it's not always about winning. It's actually yeah. about doing a lot of other things adjacent to winning. Taking out a drone, being the last surviving person, having no one remaining there. Classic Loki strategy. Yes. There's a lot that goes into that little puzzle, and it's not just blow up your opponent. It's actually not really based on the units you have on the board at all for combat. It's yeah. all based on the cards you play. Whatever the amount of units you, you have in that area has no effect on whether you're going to win that combat or not. So it's kind of a twist on like the dudes of the map, typical style yeah. area control. It's a weird twist and like you said, adjacent to both those genres. And then lastly, just one last note, asymmetric factions. Everyone's going to come into play with their own asymmetric faction, the way that they adjust or interact with the game state, their strength, the, the, the potential strategy they're slightly more driven to, mm -hmm. while giving you plenty of opportunity to explore other things. That's the overview part. 
And with that, let's go ahead and dive into our opinions, starting off as usual with what we liked. Do you want to go? You like going last? Yeah, you want to go, go first? Last. Uh, yeah, so there's there's two things that really stand out for me, and I think I'm going to agree with a lot of the stuff that you all touch on, but I am not a big area control player. Both of you are. Uh, you will love uh, this genre of game, and for me, I need things adjacent to this genre of game for me to be compelled or interested in it. For instance, Blood Rage, example of an area control style game that, that I adore alongside both of you. Blood Rage is a game that I adore because the drafting is so powerful and because it's so it's such a unique, like, like grindy game, right? This is another game. This is another area control game that right now is really working for me. There's two elements that are adjacent to the area control nature of it that I really love. I like the story deck a lot. I like having escalating narrative. I like the world changing around you. I like alternate vic victory conditions. I like alternate ways to have restrictions in certain elements of the game or ways to score points. I'm just a theme and a story first type of player, and that's working. The other thing is the combat deck. It is so full of what seem to be broken cards that in the gameplay that, that's over on my channel, I pulled a card in the first upgrade cycle that I spent the rest of the game strategizing and working around. And I love that. I, I really like it when a game gives me something that feels super powerful, but is still balanced because the rest of the players around the board have other things that are also equally or differently super powerful. Yeah, for me there's gonna be 17 things. We'll go through all of them. Perfect. Uh, the first is the fact, like you said already, everything everything you just touched upon. The, the the combat cards feel powerful. Every single one, when you have an opportunity to gather them, they're strong and you want them. They're not small like plus one. They're like they they they're breaking and they're very cool to have and a lot of fun. The action cycle in general, the fact that you have these six actions, you're trying to play around. Do you want to go through that full chain? Do you want to specialize? When do you want to reclaim? I like the push and pull, the tension, and the way you have so many options around there. Uh, what you said about the fact that area control is not the dominant action. Aspect. Mm -hmm. I love that. I like area control games, but I like them as a core. When I've played pure area control games, I tend not to like them as much. I want more things going on, and this is very much more things going on. I like the fact that losing combat is, again, look, look strategy aspect. Mm -hmm. It's not that punishing. Even if you don't get any points, usually losing combat results in you losing one thing. It's not that big a deal. Will it mess with your plans? Absolutely it will. Yeah. Will it cause you to be out of the game? Not in the slightest. It just means yeah. that you don't get all the fun things you wanted as fast. It's not that punishing. I like the opportunity cards a little-ish. They, they, I like the strategy option they provide. I don't find the cards themselves that exciting, but I like the strategy option the opportunity cards provide as one of many pathways to victory in the way you can chain chunks of points if you start leaning heavily on the same type. Mm -hmm. The edge runners pr provide variety and differences to the game, a lot of fun, more powers and abilities, more ways to try to pursue an action. Uh, the story I will give a caveat to because we're going to come back to the story and things I don't like, but I like, I like the sense of exploration and difference the stories provide. I want to go through this game in every single story they have because it provides a new element. I'm diving into this game, I'm exploring it, but what's the twist this time? What's mm -hmm. different? We'll, we'll come back to it, trust me. But I do like the stories with that caveat. I like... I like those things. Do I have more? I like the asymmetric factions. I like the asymmetric factions in general. They give you a different twist to pull in. And I just genuinely like the engine. The, the core engine at play gives you a lot of pathways for how you can pursue something that's going to earn you points, the ways you can try to strategize or attack or build. It gives you a lot of different pathways forward, and I enjoy watching those play out. And I think, I think I'll stop there. I'm going to be echoing a whole bunch of what you said, you basically. Last. I know, but then you take it all. She I always going forget last this. and going, yes. <laughs> yes, basically. Um, well, I'm going to touch on one point that you didn't touch upon. Um, I like the miniatures. I like how there's sure. different yes. uh, molds that are pretty. The factions are all different, and then even all of these edge runners are different. I like, um, I love miniatures. So I was going to touch upon the miniatures. I also like this net running action where you hmm. have to take a chance and roll the die. And as you get farther and farther along, down you have to take it this is the type of chance I don't mind the <laughs> dice roll okay uh, <laughs> we're gonna talk about variability and chance later but I like how as you get further and further down you're risking more and more and the rewards get better and better as you get farther along but you have a higher number to beat. I like the variability that the edge runners bring I like that the opportunities I feel aren't as flavorful as you were saying but they do provide an outlet of scoring points that is important in the game and shouldn't be ignored should not be ignored I, as I ignored it. I like the asymmetric powers and abilities. I love these combat cards. They do feel broken at some points. And I like the potential that the story has for offering variability. 
Shall we segue into what we don't like? Because I can go start. First with... time? Yes, I'll go Boom. first. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. I I like variability in games. It's one of the key things that I find important, and I don't like when the variability pits or puts someone at a disadvantage from the other players. And with asymmetric powers and abilities, I found that some of the stories can favor some factions more than the others or disfavor some factions more than the others. And while I understand the thematic element integrating into the game, it's important to have that, it doesn't always feel good. And so I'm gonna ding some of the stories a little bit on that. Alex is gonna ding the dice at some point. I'll ding some stuff, we'll ding <laughs> some ding, stuff. You'll ding some stuff. Um, that, the area control doesn't feel super important to me. And I like area control feeling a little bit more important. It's very easy to get your dudes back on. It's very easy to get them kicked off. It's not such a strong hold, which can be a plus or negative. I find I like them when there's more there. I yeah. think those are the two main negatives I have, and then I'll probably echo it. I'll jump straight off your last thing, because I understand what you're saying while also not being bothered by it. Uh, the aspect of area control, it's very easy to have presence in a spot, and presence already gives you a reward. Having dominance is significantly harder, but yeah. often in most areas, the push for dominance isn't necessarily worth it rather than just spreading your presence. The point of interest is where there's more area yeah. control squabbling. Yes. And you have time. to have conflict to pull people out. And there's out only one way to pull people out. Yeah. 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 So on the one hand, I can hear the argument for having a little bit more of an incentive for dominance that would make it something worth striving for. And right now, I think it's more incidental. I either have it or I don't. I'm not going to yeah. fight for it. I'd rather go other places. Uh, but also, I don't mind the fact this is not heavily an area control game. So on both ways. I understand exactly yeah. why it bothers you, uh, but it doesn't bother me that much. I'll ping right off of that and then give it yeah. back to you. One of my big criticisms is actually the fact that you have three different areas where as long as you have presence there, you can start scoring victory points. And victory points, and I'll get into this in a larger yeah. sense, victory points are kind of cheap in the larger cycle of this game. And I don't actually love that. And I kind of wish, alongside you, that some of these areas gate had like this dash or this line where mm -hmm. something like points or the extra cube was limited behind dominance mm -hmm. as opposed to being a free and in free use for you to just grab and utilize this you can take as long as you have presence every time you refresh you can pull three why wouldn't i be there yeah. it, it almost feels like my strategy is lacking because i'm not there because yeah. it's a base action that you have to take. I think a very easy substitution that can be made is by putting the wild resource in place of the coin. That way it the is point. the point. That way it is a little bit more of a powerful location to be in and you can get a wild resource versus having to take either the coins or the data, but it's not the point like you said. I like the points, so I'm not going to agree with that. <laughs> yeah, because you you based almost I, one. I almost just want it to be more meaningful. I just want it to be yeah. more meaningful. Yeah, no, I hear that point. Uh, past that, as far as things I don't like, I'll, I'll echo what Shira said strongly with the stories. I like the stories, I do. I will play with the stories. But to me, the stories are a thematic benefit that comes at the cost of the mechanical gameplay. The randomness of it, the fact that I jump into something not knowing how it plays out, means that I, I have to basically choose, do I want to slightly weaken the gameplay experience to have a more variable gameplay experience? And honestly, the answer for me is still yes. I play games for fun, not to win, and so while I will try to win, I'd rather the variability that the, the stories provide. I like them, but understand that I do think it comes at the cost of the pure gameplay experience. Speaking of the pure gameplay experience, the dice you roll, which these are not the dice you roll, just for the record, <laughs> But the dice you roll uh, when you're going up the network on a track in general, I don't, it's the same, same exact situation. I don't mind it from a thematic stance of the risk, the reward. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm hacking close to the network. Oh my gosh, I roll. But like also, you can go up the network on a track four times in a row and fail every single time. And I could go up the network on a track and not fail the entire game. And that's a fairly large luck-based swing in a game that is otherwise does not feel very luck-driven. It feels much more player-driven, reading the players, reading the cars, reading the situation. And then there's an entire aspect of the game where it's like, Maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Let's see how it plays out. So again, I don't mind it, but I think it comes at the cost of the the pure mechanical gameplay. I think I had another thing, but I'm going to let you jump into it because I'm sure I had something else. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a few things that I want to go through. Uh, I have to start off by defending my story cards, though, a, a little bit. I, I'm a theme-first well, player. and We're in the areas we're talking about what we don't that like. That caveat's mm -hmm. important, but here's the thing with the stories. When you play through them and they're unknown... I find that the branching pathways add a variability to the game where you have to be reactionary to, to what's happening in the story. And I don't, I understand that you felt very debuffed. 
I don't think they're as debuffing as as it can imply if you're not all if you're if you're able and ready to think on your feet quite 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 heavily. That being said, I also like the premise of the branching stories when you're playing with them as a known entity, because then deciding on what pathway you want to go down becomes a, a critical point in the structure of the game experience itself, and you get to choose which ending you want that favors whatever faction or strategy you have. Uh, so there's a little bit of a dance there. Stuff that I don't like, though. I already talked about the concept of these points on the yeah. actual board, but points overall in this game feel sort of cheap. It doesn't always feel super rewarding when I earn points. The combat cards give me points for nearly every combat that I engage in. The board gives me points. The opportunities have escalating points. The different net runners that are edge runners that I'm able to get will help me secure and score points in a variable, a variable, variable different ways. Uh, in fact, moving up this track over here, the net track, that gives me points just for getting to the end of it and taking whatever risk is there. I get points for going down different story pathways, and I get points for engaging in the story in different uh, narrative-focused ways, and I find that I often don't feel like I've been able to play a full game uh, as much as I've been able to just grab a bunch of points and go down whatever kind of pathway I, I, I fall into. And I want more of a satisfying victory, and I think that satisfying victory would come at the cost of some of the readily available points across the table, which might also limit the variability and limit the way that you can kind of be adaptive to the game cycle. Um, but I, I do find that there's a degree there's a degree of satisfaction that I get in other games where points are tighter that I don't find here in, in uh, Cyberpunk. Another thing that I don't like is I actually find the story to not be as impactful and immersive as I would like it to be. Um, I, I know this goes counter to what you guys are looking for, but for me, I want this world to feel like it's living and feel like it's changing. And, and so I want there to be more of an impact on, on the game state, not just a document You want that sections of the board shutting down. You want more rewards yeah. than other sections. I, I want there to be a higher level of variability and a higher level of adaptation needed. And disclaimer, at this point, playing. we have not played through all the story content, so... Yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely more. still more out there. It's just in the experience that I've had so far. Uh, and then the other thing that I was going to reference is... Uh, I'm almost forgetting the other thing that I was going to remember. Reference. My thing, if you want. Did you remember your yes. thing? Give me ten seconds to think Absolutely. of mine while you do yours. So thing. the last thing I want to talk about, as far as things I don't like, is Shira mentioned she likes the miniatures. I think the miniatures are fantastic. They are, but I don't like the fact <gasps> the bases. The bases. Okay, this is my third thing as well. Thank you okay. so much. Absolutely. We're on the same page. The bases. I, I really find the like bases this. to be an obnoxious system that I think they can do better on. Now, first of all, two things. Easy solution off the bat. Offhand, we have these explain zones over what, here. Explain what the bases sure. are real quick. There's three different types of units. There's going to be your edge, run, your edge runners, your uh, your solos, and then what's the last one called again? The uh, engineer? Your techies, 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 your solos, techies. and net runners. So net runners, the techies, and your solos. Solos are going to be your combat. Uh, the techies are more just gathering the uh, the edge runners and opportunity cards, and your edge runners are going up the track over here. The problem is they have different bases, and they're not in the slightest bit intuitive as to what the bases are. Yeah. We'll get to in a second solutions. Off the bat, the first thing they should do is uh, over here on the board, the specific zones, the yellow and gray zones are taken by techies and the purple zones are taken by net runners. Make those base sections on the board match the units themselves. The, it's a simple the issue is solution. The problem is anyone that you can, can put in anyone there. in any zone just to occupy the zone. It, 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 I'm you, fine with it. I'm fine with it. It's, it's still... It's, no, it but I'm, you, I'm saying that is the reason. Do you know how I told... I can yes, tell the difference between because the, the whole... Because of the token. The shape of the action. Yes. The shape of the action is the only way that I was 100%. able to tell. But you have to but, frequently reference that. It's not yes, immediately yes, intuitive. It it's not, not immediately obvious. Yeah, I would agree. This is where I'm going to point at a different game from Kaman. Blood Rage has leaders, mythics, and mm. regular units, and I never have a problem distinguishing those three. They use specific types of, of indicators. The leaders always have a giant banner. Staff. The mythics always have like a very clear distinction, looking a little mythic-like. Sometimes a staff, sometimes a little heavier, not as big as whatever. A cape, they manage to look different. And then the warriors, even though there's two sculpts, it's always immediately obvious yeah. to me when I'm playing Blood Rage which unit is which unit, and they have the same bases. I mean, for instance, this unit here. I never second-guessed who this is, Yes. right? He's violent, he has an axe out, he's attacking. Yes. Uh, this one? Not so clear. I, you know... He's got a very lovely pose with a giant serrated blade. Yep. But he could also be any of the others. I feel from either a sculpting stance or something, there's a way to make that... Again, I, I, we've played this multiple times, and I still find myself constantly checking, which one is this? Like, I'm pretty sure right now I got the, 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 net, the net runner down. The square base, I've managed to lock that sure. in mentally. But the, the hexagon versus the pentagon, I... 
Is it the heat hardest thing? No. It might is have it an obnoxious? actual place. The one thing that I have a problem with is that when you hire the special edge runners, they're all usually a specific type with the exception of a couple of them, but they all have a circular base. And there's no reason yeah. for that. And they're, and then I look at my have, card. Oh, and because the, of the tokens. The tokens. Yeah. But then I look at my card and I have, let's say, two edge runners and I'm like, which one is which? And I'm literally pulling them off the board. They both have glasses. They're both holding something in their hand. And this is the hardest part for me, knowing which character and which ability yeah ties to which one. I see what they were trying to do here. I, I do think it is right workable, yeah. but I, I also think, and your your reference to Blood Rage is a great example of this, because a lot of this game, for me, actually feels similar to some of the elements that are in Blood Rage. Like, the fact that the Loki strategy exists here mm -hmm. is just glorious. But I, I find that I am consistently getting confused to the point where I hired someone and then kind of stopped engaging with you him. You didn't put him back out because I had a card that would give me points for taking him I, out. I hired someone and kind of stopped engaging with him because I was still trying to... F I, I didn't want to bother with another yeah. base and another unit and another thing I had to think about. Um, it's... We're nitpicking, to be clear. It's a solvable... Yeah. It's a, and this it's is also a real. prototype, by the yeah. way. Um, this well, is all prototype components. It's... it's it's solvable-ish. It's also playable. I, I don't yep. know that it gets in the way of me ever wanting to sit down and play the game. Correct. It is a bother, though. Yes. Yeah. That's it. That's the things we don't have. We don't like anything else we want to jump in on, or that was mine. I was I was trying to think of it. I spent like a minute thinking because it's, <laughs> cause it's not a big deal. It, it's not a big deal. It's just like it was this thing that was bothering me. I was like, I'm gonna mention it. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, from there, I guess we'll move to final thoughts and ratings for those who want to give it. Up to you all, what's, whatever happens there. I'll jump in sharing I've given that my caveat. After that, I'm happy talking, oh, however. You know? Sounds good. So for me, in general, rating scales out of five over here. Uh, for me, this is a four to five, but I believe will go up. I believe it will go up over multiple plays, but I, I'm leaving it at that four for right now because there are enough things that bother me that it's possible it stays the same or it's possible it goes down. I don't know. I, I was jumping back and forth between a four and a 4.5. I really think this will end up at a 4.5. I'm really enjoying the experience and I'm really enjoying the multiple pathways towards victory. Yeah. Another last thing I'll mention as far as things that I, I like that I didn't really bring up is every game we've played of this has been under that 90 minute range. And I really like that. I like that and many of these games out there, and, and I, this is the context that matters here, Many other games, I would say, offer that 90 minute range theoretically as far as area control experiences. And usually when they do, our group, maybe it's just our group, maybe it's our problem, I don't know, but our group manages to turn those into two and a half hour, three hour long experiences. We're yeah. very skilled. When we play Kemet, when we play Rurik, when we play Inish, when we play any of these games, Inish, Inish is a game that should take an hour. It doesn't for our group, it takes two hours for our group. These games tend to drag for us, and I like the fact that this game has consistently come in at under 90 minutes for us so far. It's got hungry victory points. I, I like that. I like that it gives me a nice, solid, quick, and yet doesn't feel too quick, a very rewarding, very variable, area control adjacent experience with a tons of pathways to victories, a few small nitpicks, but overall an experience that I have really enjoyed. I'm going to give it the four for now. I really think this goes up over time. I'm going to jump in with a quick caveat, and then I'll send it to you for sure. the for the rating. Something that you wouldn't have reference for, Alex. Yes. Two-player in this game. I have not played that two. Is not anywhere near as rewarding as three-player or four-player. I'd imagine. Uh, okay. the, well, and it's true for area control, but it's something, it's something that I have played through, and, and Devin gotcha. and West also sat down and played through. And two-player, if you're looking for a two-player game, this right now is not hyper-compelling to me. The board's a little bit too sense. open, the points are a little bit too variable. My general assumption with area yeah. control is, for instance, I remember with Ankh, Ankh, another command game, is a lot of people are like, and it works at two players. For yeah. me, the way I view area control is I assume it doesn't work at two players, and then people will be like, it really does. I guess it's, I, it's something that it's I've experienced. It's something I've been able to play. You guys were playing on the right side, because this is a four we side. Yeah. Yeah. Four side. Good to mention. Good to mention. Yeah. Um, I'm actually cooling down on this one. Really? I was really excited with playing it on TTS, and... I need to try out the other factions, so I think that is slowing me down a bit. I feel like the faction might not fit me, my playstyle, in the end, but I'm going to go with a 3.5 with the thought that it is probably going to rise in the final version. I like the possibilities of what this can offer, but between the stories and playing with the same faction numerous times and wanting to explore the other factions, I, I'm at a 3.5. Cool. Uh, I'm going to be sitting right where Alex is a, a four with the caveat that I think this probably goes up. Um, I think this doesn't ever land at a five out of five for me, though. I think it probably goes up to about a 4.5. Uh, the reason being is 
I mean, all, all the caveats that we've given so far when it comes to criticism, but the largest thing for me is that it, it's got this bit of an integration for a story narrative without going as deep as I want it to, which is funny because the story narrative is also the thing that's probably keeping you all from going up to a file, you know. Yeah, I'm and uncertain, so uncertain. I, I'm just saying, like, it's, it's funny because it's the thing that I want it to be deeper, you mm. all want it to be shallower, and it's holding both of us back in some in some important ways. Uh, but... That's that's where I'm gonna rest. I don't necessarily I really, want it to be shallower. I want it to be I, less random yeah, yeah. and targeted. See, and I want it to be more random and more targeted. Uh, but overall, I really like this game, and I'm really excited to get it down to the table. Um, mm -hmm. I think this competes for me in area control style games that I want to play over top of what your group does. Like this is this is not as good as Blood Rage, but next to Blood Rage in the conversation, and I would yeah. probably choose it. I would choose it over Kemet for sure. Uh, and it would be, I would choose it over Cyclades for sure, and it would be in the conversation with Inish. He just doesn't play these games. Anymore. I don't like those, I don't like he those doesn't two like, games He does much. not like him and he doesn't so, like Cyclades. For me, the strength, there's something we talked about doing the gameplay video, actually, but at one point you asked me about, like, what games this compares to, and that's one of the things I like about this game is the fact that I don't have a good answer. Direct this is not a game where I can say, well, I'd rather just play Inish, I'd rather just play Rorik. It's not. It, it First of all, the playtime alone makes it competitive in my collection. Uh, secondly is the combination of things they go with, the action selection, the card play, the area control, the not so much area control, the story, the combination of everything they bundled in here really makes it feel very distinctive for me. I don't know where it lands over time. I don't, but I, I'm optimistic yeah. this is one that sticks around for a long time because I really enjoy it and it feels different and it's short. I've heard people ask, how would this compare to Scarface 1920 with similar themes of gangs and a different area that. control? Scarface is longer, much longer. Um, <laughs> no, so. So people, I don't think they're hyper-comparable. I don't think they're hyper-comparable, but some people have brought them up in the concept that it's both gangs trying to t take control over neighborhoods. Yeah. The area control is not super important in both of them. It's it's um, more superficial theme, though, because so, yeah. Scarface... And, and there's also the Godfather game that a lot of people have compared which this to. Which none of us have played. Which none yes. of us have played. So there's there's some things out there that I think might be reference points, um, but I would, I would agree with you. I don't know of anything directly that I have experienced that feels like this does on the table. I actually kind of like the Scarface option. It's very, very different. But I it's very it's different, but it's very one different. is with, feeling one is, is a deck of cards. But I don't I think saying, so. It is compared. I felt it was. And so yeah. I felt like I, I wanted to bring it up yeah. at the last no, so second. I, I did not see or hear that. I like that. Again, just feeling wise. I'm with you on mechanics. It's yeah. totally different. Left, right, center. Everything's different. <laughs> You're literally feeling deck building wise, Scarface. This is not. It has a similar-ish feeling to me. In any case, so that's basically it. We're going to go ahead and call this a review uh, at this point because we're done and we just did the whole thingy. Uh, there's a link down to the Kickstarter down below and, and hope you enjoyed or found this helpful in some way, shape, or form. Until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I'm Shiro. I'm a duck. And have a good one.